An operational pause has arisen in the Kursk region. The enemy lacks up to 12,000 troops to change the situation in its favor, Ukrainian military expert Vladislav Zeleznev said on the Kiev 24 TV channel. Russian propagandists say that the Russian army is accumulating reserves and resources. But I think the situation is much worse. The enemy has suffered serious losses and needs at least 10 to 12,000 to have a total advantage in this section of the front and to fundamentally resolve the issue of the Kursk offensive of the Ukrainian Defense Forces, he noted. According to him, today, up to 40,000 enemy forces and assets are concentrated in the Kursk region, and this is many times more than our forces that are performing a certain task there. At the same time, he emphasized that even such an advantage did not give the enemy any results. At first, the Russians moved forward, but then got stuck. Zeleznev notes that the Russian army does not have the ability to pull such a large number of personnel from other areas. And here the issue of North Korean soldiers comes to the forefront. This is the number of military personnel from North Korea that we are talking about. Today there are already 1,500 to 1,600 North Korean troops on Russian territory. Again, this is a question of logistics and movement from the Far East to the Kursk region, especially if they are moved together with armored vehicles. Then this will take up to four weeks, the expert noted. According to him, it is unlikely that the situation in the Kursk region will be radically changed in the near future due to the lack of appropriate resources among Russians. Military expert Pavel Narozny noted that the number of troops that North Korea sent to the war in Ukraine is unlikely to have a critical effect on the front. According to him, we are talking about 12,000 fighters. But the enemy group in Ukraine is approximately 500,000 fighters. That is, these 10,000 are 2% within the statistical error. In addition, North Korea has not fought since the 1950s. Although they have always prepared for war, they have no experience in conducting military operations. The expert added that it is unrealistic to somehow dilute the Russian army with Korean troops because there is a very big problem. The language barrier. Russia's President Vladimir Putin on Tuesday held bilateral talks with South African President Cyril Ramaphosa on the sidelines of BRICS summit in the Russian city of Kazan. Putin praised trade and economic relations between the two countries, adding that both Russia and South Africa can work together on diversifying trade and investment and cooperate in other spheres such as energy, industry, agriculture, science and innovation. We continue to see Russia as a valued ally as a valued friend, who supported us right from the beginning, from the days of our struggle against apartheid right through to now. So we are really delighted to be here, Ramaphosa said. The BRICS bloc of developing economies that initially comprised Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa has expanded rapidly to embrace Iran, Egypt, Ethiopia, the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. Turkey, Azerbaijan and Malaysia have formally applied to become members, and a few others have expressed an interest in joining. Observers see the BRICS summit as part of the Kremlin's efforts to showcase support from the global south amid spiraling tensions with the West and help expand economic and financial ties. Putin is set to hold about 20 bilateral meetings on the sidelines of the summit, including Tuesday's encounters with China's Xi Jinping and Egypt's Abdel Fattah el-Sisi. On Thursday, Putin is set to meet with United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres, who will be making his first visit to Russia in more than two years. Guterres has repeatedly criticized Russia's action in Ukraine. Что касается двусторонних отношений, то они основываются на принципах всеобъемлющего стратегического партнерства, равноправия и взаимного уважения. Развивается политдиалог, активно контактируют наши внешнеполитические ведомства, Советы Безопасности. 
налажено взаимодействие по межпарламентской линии. Торгово-экономические связи между Россией и ЮАР в целом находятся на хорошем уровне. После некоторого спада товарооборот опять начал расти. В январе-августе этого года он рост составил 3%. Здесь, конечно, есть над чем совместно нужно работать в плане наращивания и диверсификации взаимной торговли, инвестиций. Перспективные сферы сотрудничества – это энергетика, промышленность, аграрный сектор, наука, инновации, декларации и планы действий до 2026 года. So we're really delighted to be here and to know that uh, uh, we are going to have important discussions here in Kazan within the BRICS family. So thank you very much for welcoming us.